12.5 was 11.6. 13.3 was 12.4. 14.1 was 11.1. 15.2 was 14.2. 16.5 was 14.5. 17.4 is, like the previous tests, a repeat. 17.4 is 16.4. As many rounds and reps as possible in 13 minutes of 55 deadlift, 55 wall ball, 55 calories, 55 handstand push-ups. <laughs> Buena suerte, muchachos y muchachas. All right, friends, we've got a repeat. We've got a chipper, and really, most importantly, we've got another opportunity for you guys to test how far you've come in one year. We've got to make final preparations and bring the equipment out to the floor. While we do that, you guys check out the movement standards. For 17.4 to count, it needs to look like this. At the call of three, two, one, go, the athlete picks up the bar and begins their first set of 55 deadlifts. With the 55 deadlifts complete, the athlete moves to their wall ball and begins their first set of 55 wall ball shots. With the wall ball shots complete, the athlete moves to the rower and with the screen clearly visible at zero calories, begins to row. When the screen clearly reads 55 calories, the athlete moves to the wall and begins their first set of 55 handstand push-ups. If they complete 55 handstand push-ups, the athlete will move back to the barbell and begin another set of 55 deadlifts. The athlete will continue working in this manner, accumulating as many repetitions as possible in the 13-minute window. Note the time at the end of each movement as this will be used as a tiebreaker. You guys know this by now. These are abbreviated standards you've just seen. You're silly if you don't go to the website to check out the full list of standards. Two important notes you guys need to know. This is a little bit different than last year. Please be diligent in your measurements. There is a brand new measurement for the handstands that go on the ground. There's also a slight change to the deadlift you want to pay attention to. So head to games.crossfit.com to find that. Second, after every single stage, every single movement, you take a time. That is your time break, and it could cost you big on the leaderboard if you don't make note of that. All right, we're about to kick it off. The action will remain here, but the live action call will come from Santa Cruz and the boys at HQ, Sean Woodland, Tommy Marquez, and Pat Sherwood. Guys, let's do this. Thank you, Rose. So 17.4 is a repeat. We have 16.4 coming out again. A lot going on here, but who do you think this favors just right off the bat? Oh, man. Uh, it it favors Brooke Wells. Yeah. It has to. This was one of the larger vic margins of victories mm -hmm. between these two athletes last year. But a year's gone by, and, it, it, you know, she can, Brenda can still make yeah. it a heck of a fight. I, I think this might be a situation where Brooke Wells last year, she had, one, she had the 12th best time in this particular workout across any woman. So I think she may have already been around what the cap might be for that mm -hmm. workout for her potentially because there's just only so much time mm -hmm. to do all the movements. So I think we might see a... A win from Brooke, possibly, but Brenda kind of closed the cap gap or maybe even could be right up next with her to showcase some of that improved capacity because, let's be real, the wall balls and the deadlifts, that's right up Brooke Wells' right. alley. Sure. She's going to smack those first two movements. Four total movements here and a ton of reps. What are the biggest keys to this workout, Pat? Man, okay, I got my three keys here. Right. Right? Number one is proper row pace. If you blow out the row, 
you're going to gain maybe 10 seconds, but that 10 seconds could be so costly that you just cave in for the next two minutes recovering. So, you know, be smart, row hard, but don't go too hard. Then handstand push-up strategy. That's a huge set, 55 handstand push-ups. So don't be a hero. Break when it's before you have to. Don't reach failure or your workout could come to a grinding halt before it has to. Then, if you are one of the best in the world and you enter a second round, which a lot of the top athletes did, most athletes didn't get that far. They made it through the deadlifts, only a few of them, and into the second set of wall balls a little bit. So if you make it into the second round, absolutely go for broke and drop the hammer because you probably don't have that much time left. Now the social media world is a buzz now that 17.4 has been re been revealed. Let's send it over to Brooke Ends for the latest on what's going on in social media. Brooke, what's happening? Sean, it is a buzz. People are extremely excited for one because they everyone loves a good repeat. We get to see how much better we are a year later, two years later. And a lot of people are showing me that they did this scaled last year and they're doing RX this year. So that makes me super pumped for people in our community that get to see themselves progress that way. And most people just they just are ready to get going they want to see the girls go head to head and i definitely want to see brooke wells smash this workout all right thanks brooke we'll check back with you with you a, a little bit later but let's talk about brooke wells you know what kind of message can she send tonight i know we still have a, a ways to go but she's someone who's trying to get herself towards the top of the leaderboard trying to make a case for the fact that she is the american favorite to possibly win the games so what can she do tonight by smashing this workout well, I, I think she can just kind of showcase that she's got it right between the ears, right? Because mm -hmm. you're going into an environment where you're changing time zones, you're in a foreign country, nobody around you is necessarily really rooting for you because <laughs> you're not the hometown favorite. Right. You're at elevation, you're not on your right sleep schedule, you've got a different you know, nutrition plan when you're out of a, in a different country. And for her to be able to have all of those things come into play and still walk away with possibly a top time, even from this open announcement a la Matt Fraser last week, I think that sends a clear message to everyone that it doesn't matter when or where she's a contender for the top. I think you touched on something earlier, actually, which is Brooke already had one of the best scores, period. So you wouldn't think there's much mm -hmm. room to grow. And also, there aren't any crazy movements in this, right? What CrossFit athletes not rowing, doing wall balls, doing deads, doing handstand push-ups? So if you're one of the best, you probably are almost at your capacity there. So what if she does smash her old score, yeah. that makes it all the more terrifying, quite frankly. And last year, she got into the second round and she got 16 wall ball shots. Wow. So that's what I'm gonna be looking for this year to see if she, if she can punch past that even just a little bit. So this might favor Brooke Wells, like you said. What does Brenda Castro have to do in order for you, when this is all said and done, to look at her and say, you know what, I think she has a legitimate chance of making it to Madison. I think she has to get through the deadlifts, maybe just touch the wall ball. It doesn't matter if she gets reps there, but I think to get through that deadlift, because she's, let's, let's be honest, she's smaller than Brooke, and Brooke is one of the best deadlifters in the game. So for her to be able to compete at that level with so many reps, if you get through that second round, that's 110 deadlifts total in that. And I think she has to come out and just fly on the handstand push-ups, because I think that's possibly an area where maybe she can catch up, because she's not the, the taller athlete, so that's going to be a slight disadvantage on the rower. Wall balls, maybe not necessarily not her jam either. So if she can basically showcase some extreme talent and proficiency, you know, in a right. movement that possibly suits her, I think that just shows smart game planning, smart strategy, and a seasoned competitor. I'm going to agree. Touch the wall ball. Last year she got into the second round and she got 26 deadlifts, about halfway through that set. Get one wall ball rep. It'll be super impressive. Yeah, we will be keeping an eye on it all night tonight. We're going to be calling the action here from HQ. Of course, the workout is going down in Mexico City. Remember, Brooke Enns is on Facebook Live. You feel like commenting away, do that. She might interact and might get your question here on air a little bit later. But now it's go time. Brenda Castro and Brooke Wells, 17.4 is up next. Here is Dave Castro with the official countdown. 10 seconds. Three, two, one, go. Already 
breaking the deadlift. I mean, if Brooke Wells, one of the best deadlifters in the game, drops the bar, and you have not, I'd be, if I was Brenda's coach, I'd be screaming at her right now. 55 reps. So we'll keep an eye on the judges' hands. They will usually put them in the air when there's five reps remaining. We don't have all the bells and whistles and the live scoring that we usually have, so we will try to keep you updated on what's going on there. 13 total minutes in this event. We're at Cygnus CrossFit in Mexico City, and it is a packed house in there. This is really cool to see. And it looks so simple on paper, right? But it, it's absolutely devastating to start your workout with 55 deadlifts, 225 for the men, 155 pounds for the women. You're winded, your legs are blown up, your core is already smoked, and you have everything left. Both athletes are starting to break up their deadlifts. Brooke Wells has broken more than Brenda Castro, but her breaks have been shorter as she has immediately gotten herself right back on the barbell. Past the one minute mark, 13 minutes and 17.4, repeat of last year's 16.4, 55 deadlifts, then 55 wall balls, 55 calories rowing, and 55 handstand push ups. And now Brooke Wells, Adrian Bosman is her judge. He has his hand in the air. Two more reps to go for Brooke Wells. It's going to be very interesting for me to see Brooke obviously done. How far behind already is Brenda? If it's just a small little deficit, then we have nothing to worry about. Brooke Wells immediately under her wall balls, and now Brenda Castro is getting set to close out her set of 55. She has a handful of reps left there on the barbell, and she will join Brooke Wells on the wall. But Wells has already opened up a pretty wide lead on Brenda Castro here on the second of four movements, and the crowd trying to get behind Brenda Castro as she moves on to the wall balls with Brooke Wells. And remember, we've got 13 minutes, right? So we have 11 minutes remaining. There's so much time left here that what, if I was talking to Brenda Castro, I would tell her to relax, right? She's probably feeling the jitters. She's representing not only her country, but all of Latin America. It could get into her head and make her get into a pace that isn't the smartest thing to do. 17.4 on the left of your screen. And remember, before you do this, go to the website and watch the full movement standards because as Rory McCurdy mentioned, there's something a little bit different with the deadlifts and there's an additional measurement you need to take with the handstand push. Up. Past the two and a half minute mark, Brooke Wells continues to lead Brenda Castro. Both women have taken a break now on the wall balls and now Brooke Wells on the left is back to work. Brooke Wells on the deadlift was able to get a 17 second lead on Brenda Castro. And regardless of the movement, right, you want to say, ah, it's a big, it's a tall person's movement, it's a short person's movement, okay. In general, taller people generally like the wall ball a little bit more, but fitness will reign supreme. But these two athletes are within two inches of each other. Brenda is 5'4", Brooke Wells with a slight advantage on this movement, coming in at 5 foot 6 inches tall. Wells continues to crank away on her 55 wall balls. Brenda Castro trying to close the gap. Again, keep on their judges' hands. Once that hand goes in the air, it'll mean their athlete has five reps to go. Pretty impressive so far by Brooke Wells. I mean, she's taking a break, but they are not long. No, they're not long, and you know me. You know I love just disgusting, horrifically painful workouts. This fits the bill. There she is finishing that set. But you're exactly the muscles you need to excel at wall balls. You just blew them up on the deadlift. And guess what you need when you hop on the rower? The exact same thing. Crowd chanting Mexico, trying to urge on Brenda Castro, who's still on the wall balls. Four minutes gone by, nine minutes remaining, and Brooke Wells is She's not far behind. Calories. She's really not. She's 55 not calories far behind. going. And now Brenda Castro will get to work on her 55 calories. If Brenda Castro catches Brooke Wells on the rower, it will be the largest mistake of her life. She, that is not where she is going to win this workout. I don't want to say that you can recover on the rower because you're just taxed, you're breathing hard, your legs are smoked, but she needs to find a pace where she's gaining some nice calories, but she's got a lot of working out left to do once she gets off that thing. Castro is in the black top. Brooke Wells is in the blue top and white shorts. And that crowd is right there. This is a cool little environment. Usually at these, at these open announcements, we get a big crowd, but they're not this close to the athletes. There's the split after the wall balls. Brooke Wells got through them at the 339 mark. Brenda Castro done at 401. So the lead about the same, maybe a couple seconds bigger than it was 
after the first movement. Ren is going to get fired up with that crowd. I've spent a tremendous amount of time in Latin America. And like I said, the passion of those people, you're going to hear them just screaming, si se puede, the entire time. Had we put up any barriers, those would have been immediately disregarded. <laughs> They're going to be in these athletes' faces the entire time. Coming up on five and a half minutes gone by in 17.4, a repeat of last year's 16.4. And just to put it in perspective, Sean, you and I are probably still on the deadlifts right now, right? Okay, <laughs> they're well, yep. they're well into the row. So for these two women and for the elite athletes, in my opinion, the workout is about to begin. Once they get off the rower, that big set of 55 handstand push-ups is where the most separation is going to occur. And you mentioned the concept of interference earlier about how one movement affects the other. Now you've got three movements that you've just done that are all very taxing on everything you basically need to do. A handstand push-up. Without a doubt. And, and and even though the row is a pull and there's leg drive, you have smoked your shoulders on the wall balls, you're breathing heavy, and if you can't catch your breath, it just makes being inverted in that handstand all the more challenging. So all three of the movements leading up to the most technically challenging one, being the handstand push-up, are just setting these athletes up for one heck of a test. About ready to hit the halfway point at six and a half minutes. Remember, 13 total minutes here in 17.4. Crowd getting behind Brenda Castro. Oh yeah, they are going to help her elevate her game the entire time. Catch your breath a little bit, you get a lot left. If she's gonna make her move, she excels at the handstand push-up, but Brooke Wells does also. And I've dug myself a hole in the past by thinking that Brooke yeah. Wells, just because she's a strong girl with a barbell, doesn't like the handstand push-ups, and I was dead wrong. So again, watch once Brooke Wells starts knocking those things out. If you don't know her capabilities, you're gonna be shocked. If you weren't with us earlier, Brenda Castro is trying to become the first woman from the Latin America region to qualify for the CrossFit Games under our current regional format. And now Brooke Wells is done with her 55 calories, and she will move on to begin her 55 handstand push-ups. And I'm very curious right now to see how big is this opening set. And this year we have not only the tape line, where she has to have her heels across at the top, but we also have that box down the bottom, which the palm of her hand has to stay with inside that marked rectangle. Heels need to be completely above that gray tape. Well, it looks like she's... Just got hit with a no rep. And this is where in the past we have seen a lot of athletes struggle with this standard. And if you if you look at Brooke once she's inverted, she's broken at the midline, right? She's now her body's not in a nice straight line. Well when you break at the midline, it pulls your heels down a little bit and can make reaching that standard super challenging. And you break at the midline when your midline is taxed, you're out of breath, you're struggling for air. So again, that's why the three previous movements are so devious and make that handstand push-up even more challenging. We're seeing it right now. Brenda Kassler trying to get done with her 55 calories past eight and a half minutes. Brooke Wells is on the right. She's on the handstand push-ups. And don't count Brenda Castro out just because she's still in the rower. Brooke has gotten some no reps from Judge Adrian Bosman. I don't know how many, but if she's been working a lot and not achieving a lot of repetitions, and Brenda just starts knocking them out, this could change quickly. And this is a good pace for Brenda Castro. She's through five. I don't know how many Brooke Wells has completed, but there's a split time as Brooke Wells was able to increase her lead to about a minute 20 over Brenda Castro on the rower. But as Pat said, this is where Brenda Castro may be able to make up some ground here. She has not received a no rep yet and is moving at a pretty good lick. Now there's the first no rep. Unless you're one of the best in the business on handstand push-ups and you know yourself very well as an athlete, my advice would be small sets followed by small rest. Small sets, small rest. Don't try to be a hero. Do a huge set because then you're just going to be walking around the gym for 45 seconds trying to recover. Brooke Wells, two reps, back off the wall, approaching the 10-minute mark, and then we'll have three minutes to go here. I think Brooke Wells, and again, I don't know the rep that she's on, but I, I didn't expect to see a double. Let's put it that way. She looks like she's struggling a bit more than I would have thought right now. Wells looks like she got three in that time, and now kicking off the wall. Brenda Castro is on the right. She is back up. 
Again, if you are a fan of Mexico, a fan of Latin America or Brenda Castro, start cheering right now because if a turnaround takes place for Brenda, it has to be right here on the wall. It is really tough with that line to go fast on the handstand push -ups. It's a It is a very, very challenging standard. Again, you have to keep your body super tight, and those heels have to be clearly above that marked tape on the wall. And you see Brooks' hands are nice clearly inside the box, and meeting the standard very well. Wells is on the right. She had a minute 20 lead on Brenda Castro on the left when she got off the road. And it does seem like Brenda is maintaining larger sets than Brooke Wells, but Brooke had over a minute before Brenda even got to the wall to start accumulating reps. But both athletes are down to sets of you know, three, maybe four. I think Wells just did two and she hopped off. And you can see how this workout just creeps up on you. So it's 13 minutes, right? We just have two minutes remaining for these ladies to get off the wall, get back to the barbell, and try to blast through 55 more reps. Less than two minutes to go. And here's another thing people might not realize. Mexico City is at elevation, and that is going to have an effect. It does have an effect, and the longer the time domain, the more that can creep up on you. It's at 7,400 feet of elevation. This, this is a workout that I would say, regardless of what score they get, that they both repeat it later on and try to improve their score before they submit. Less than a minute and a half to go in 17.4. Brooke Wells. I think Brenda's making lead. this a race. I think she is too. It, it, it does look like she has gotten some bigger sets. Both are taking frequent breaks, but it seems like Brenda Castro is getting maybe one, maybe two more reps than Brooke Wells is before they hop off the wall. And now we hit the 12 minute mark and we have 60 seconds to go in 17.4. She's being very diligent with her, keeping her rest between sets very small, too. She's right back up on that wall quickly. This is it, less than a minute. She still looks really strong. Brenda Castro has been impressive here at this part of the workout. And Brooke Wells has five to go as Adrian Boss's right hand is in the air. If she can hurry here, she might be able to get a couple more deadlifts and move back to the barbell. So the elevation must be playing a huge factor because right now, even with the enthusiasm of the crowd, neither woman is going to touch their score from last year. So this is definitely going to be a redo for both of them. Ten seconds to go. Brenda Castro back on the wall just trying to get as many reps as she can. And now Brooke Wells is done and will get a couple deadlifts. And now Brenda Castro is on the barbell as well, got hit with a no rep. I don't know what the, know, the which, score is going to be. Know which what a push by either. Brenda Castro. <laughs> that was absolutely the finish I wanted to see. That girl is legit. We're going to have to wait for the official score, but this one's going to be decided either way by one or two reps at the most. I mean, How about Brenda Castro? I mean, what do we say? When, when this got announced, Brenda Castro had literally nothing to lose and everything to gain because if you work out against the sixth fittest woman in the world, well, you're not expected to win, right? But if you make it close, if you make it a race, suddenly you are on the map. Brenda put herself on the map tonight. Impressive performance from both of these athletes. Like Pat said, expect them both to redo this as neither one got close to their score from 2016. But I was impressed with Brenda Castro coming into this, learning a little bit about her and her accomplishments. I think I'm a little more impressed. And now I think that Dave Castro is letting people know who won this. If you want to talk about some capacity on handstand push-ups, Brooke Wells had over a one-minute yeah. lead, and Brenda closed that. Great scene at Cygnus CrossFit in Mexico City, the first time we've been in Mexico for an open announcement. And given the passion of the fans, I don't see how we can't go back there. If I don't learn who won in the next five seconds, I'm going to strangle Tommy Marquez. <laughs> Let's take a look at the replay here from 17.4, brought to you by 511 Tactical. And right off the bat, you know, Brooke Wells was able to open up a lead here on the deadlifts, and she really continued that pace throughout. But man, the handstand push ups. Brenda Castro cuts into it. You're right. I mean, Brooke Wells is going to open up uh, a lead on the deadlifts with 98% of the Earth's population. That's just <laughs> how it is. And again, Brenda was smart on the row. 
from Brooke got ahead of her, but she didn't let that get into her head. Definitely fed off that crowd, and I'm incredibly impressed with her pacing. Yeah, and you mentioned that, how that comes into play. I mean, if you blow out on the rower, you're going to find yourself just sucking wind and trying to get ready to do a huge set of handstand push-ups, and I think Castro obviously maintained that or managed that better than well. And I, I do truly believe that the elevation played a role hitting both these women hard. Now, neither one lives at elevation. Right. Sure, Brenda Castro lives a little bit higher than Brooke Wells, but not enough to have a significant advantage. We'll have to wait and see what the final score was as Brooke Wells got off the wall and made it to the barbell, but right behind her was Brenda Castro. So Wells getting four, five reps there at the deadlift. I'm not sure how many Castro got. She got close, I'll tell you she that She definitely much. got close. We still don't have the, the final score, but... What a show that both Brenda Castro and Brooke Wells put on. Rory McKernan is on that madhouse of a competition floor. Looks like he has Brooke Wells with him. So let's go back down to Cygnus CrossFit in Mexico City and hear from the sixth fittest woman on earth from 2016, Brooke Wells. All right, it was an up and down battle, but in the end, I saw the scar cards and it came down to one rep. Brooke. I mean, it looked like you were cruising to the get-go. Where did this thing set in? Um, just making sure that every rep on the hands and push-up count matters so much. And I think in the middle of the workout, you just want to go. You don't want to sit there and think about each rep, but you have to. Yeah. So. And so what was going wrong? Can you, do you have clarity now on what was happening? It looked like the first two reps were great. The third one would always drop a little bit. Um, I have my butt has a tendency to go against the wall. I think I have a natural arch. So trying to get my butt, like not towards the wall takes a lot of effort so i think that i just got a little fatigued on the third one well so the question uh on everybody's mind was altitude how would it affect you when did you feel that um i really really tried not to think about it because i really didn't want it to affect me but i was breathing a lot harder once we got like halfway through the wall balls the row was rough all right so you're sitting fantastically in the world in the open and in your region in the open but obviously you did better on this one last year will you redo this um, yeah, I normally wouldn't, but since altitude was such a factor, um, I think I would get a better baseline of where I'm at if I did it normal. Hey, congratulations. You came into Lions Zen. You did a fantastic job. Good job. Ladies and gentlemen, Brooke Wells. Hey, guys, give it up for the athletes. All right, there is so much more to come. These guys are still chomping at the bit, so don't go away. Right now, i got to thank our sponsor for 17.4, Assault Fitness. You guys know how brutally elegant their air bikes are. Well, now they've got the air runner as well. And they've got a screaming deal on this thing. If you go to their website, assaultfitnessproducts.com, use the code RUNNER, you're going to get a disgusting deal on these things. So check that out. And if you live within the U.S., it's free shipping as well. Coming up, we've got the cool down show where we'll hear from Brenda Castro as well. You guys got some questions? The people want the local hero. We'll sit down with Dave Castro and both athletes. And then me and Adrian take this one on at altitude. I'm not looking forward to that. Roe versus Boz 17.4. That's going to be exclusive. It's brought to you by FitAid. It's going to be exclusively on the CrossFit Games Facebook page. So if you're not already watching there, tune in. All of the best opinions that I've gotten on the Open have come from CrossFit's Director of Certifications and Training, Nicole Carroll. Her series, uh, Tips on the Open, continues right now with these uh, opinions on what you should do to approach 17.4. Hey everyone, Nicole Carroll here with your tips for the Open this week, 17.4. My goal this year is to beat my score from last year. On 16.4, I got through 29 handstand push-ups for a total of 194 reps. For the deadlifts and wall balls, we saw last year that it is much smarter to do smaller sets that allow you to take shorter rests than it is to do big sets that force you into those long rests. One way to accomplish this is to try to maintain consistent rest throughout the deadlift and the wall balls. Take something like a five to 10 second window of rest and allow that to dictate the size of your working set. This is gonna look a little different for everyone depending on their capacity. For example, it could take me 11 sets of five to maintain that rest window. It could take you five sets of 10 and another set of five. 
Rowing for calories, not a ton of strategy here, but something to consider is finding that sweet spot where you're making every pull count, but you're not blowing yourself up to the point where it's gonna take you a ton of time to transition into those handstand push-ups. 17-4 uses complementary movements. This means you'll be breathing hard, but the muscles required for the next movement will have life in them. They can go. You just need to push yourself to transition quickly and then get a few reps at that next movement. For the handstand push-ups, 55 is a big set and the standard is challenging. Make sure you familiarize yourself with it before starting this workout. One thing I remember from last year is that this set of handstand push-ups is significantly more challenging than expected, and I think we saw that across the board with a lot of athletes. The best way to handle this then is take really small sets, much smaller than you think you should. I'm going to try to hold myself to sets of three, and then also make sure you use a really big kip right from the start. If you start to struggle with getting your heels over the line in the handstand push-ups, there's a couple things you can try that will make your body a little longer. One of them is bring your hands closer together, and the other one is moving a little closer to the wall. Both of these things, though, change the feel of your handstand push-ups, so if you're going to use them, spend a little time practicing them in your warm-up. The best thing about these workouts that repeat themselves in the open is that it gives us an opportunity to step back from focusing on comparing ourselves to everybody else and instead focus on how we're doing relative to ourselves and see all of the progress we've made over the last year. But really, no matter where you shake out in this regard, always remember the most important thing is to have some fun with it and good luck. Back inside the update studios for the cool down show brought to you by Rosti, Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez and Pat Sherwood. Brooke Entz is monitoring social media. I'm sure the social media crowd got their money's worth with that matchup, Brooke. What are, what are people saying now that they've gotten to see two athletes go at 17.4? Um, a lot of people are reminding me, and even though I'm fully aware, but about elevation. But what one person did remind me um, is that his name is Armin VF that Brenda also is from Monterey. So she, that was elevation for her as well. I think it was easy for us to really notice that Brooke Wells may have a problem, but Brenda will also be having a problem with the air as well as Brooke. Um, other than that, people are really, really happy. They were so excited to see Brenda come back in the handstand push-ups. So, and that's across the board. All the comments were just really, really excited, saw her push and they loved how close of a fight it was. And, um, People are really excited to do the workout. We have Dale Scott. Uh, what is your strategy going into this workout with last year's performance in mind? Um, I think it's always a really good idea, Dale. For me, right off the bat, I would just want to try and remember, talk to my coach, try and remember what my strategy was the year before. And then knowing that I am better today than I was a year ago, decide where I can push the boundaries a little bit. You're automatically, you have to think about you know, what your goal is. Because we have someone else, grab his name really quick. Um, let's see, Graham. He's talking about how if you can move that deadlift weight, but maybe, you know, you can't do a ton of the, of the reps at that weight, should you try and do RX or should you go scaled? You know, I recommend just know what your goal is in mind for a workout like this for any of the workouts. And then do something that's going to work for you. Um, if your goal is not regionals this year, it's not the games this year, then maybe be smart about whatever weight you use or the technique you use or going RX or scaled and make sure you can be successful. And I'd just go from there. But uh, other than that, people have absolutely loved the workout. They loved watching Brenda do really well. And I do not envy the girls breathing through a hose right now or, <laughs> or a straw because they've got to be feeling like they're breathing through a straw. Uh, how do you guys feel about your workout, and what would your strategy be for this? Uh, the biggest hint for me that I say is that if, you, if that's a weight you can move, 225, go 10 down to 1 by 1s, and that'll get you to 55, and that'll get you a nice little break. Everything else, you know, wall balls, I'm probably not going to break up too many times. So I'm, I'm good at those. Uh, rowing, use that to move, and recover a little bit, set yourself up for, well for handstand push-ups. That's kind of how I'm going to attack it. Well, well, I think this is one of the few workouts where I think you can have basically a mapped out strategy yeah. for every movement. Because remember, 55 is a big chunk of, of each one of these uh, movements in particular. So 
maybe toy with some intervals, some work yeah. rest ratio for all of these to make sure that you're, you're not pushing the red line too much because if you hit the red line and you start to walk into a set of 55 handstand push-ups, you're not setting yourself yeah. up for success. I crushed this thing last year, <laughs> and I am going to absolutely crush it again this year. That was my strategy. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously being silly. Like, Embrace the scaled lifestyle. There's nothing wrong. There's no shame. It's a wonderful community. We're always looking for new members. Please come and join us. I think one of the keys is can you move that deadlift weight safely right if you can do that okay then maybe it's small sets but if you're like ah, i know it's a super big challenge don't even worry about it at all knock out a scaled one you can do it you know prescribe in the future all good have fun live to train another day yeah and i think that uh, nicole said the best small manageable sets Agreed. on this you know go fewer reps than you think that you can actually handle to keep that pace up all right the athletes have cooled down and now they're ready for the rest of the cool down show they are on the floor with dave castro and roy mckernan let's send it back to Mexico City. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Mexico City. This is our portion of the cool down show. We've got Dave, both athletes. Tefi Escolero, our level one seminar trainer, is going to help us translate for Brenda Castro as well. But I'm going to start with Dave Castro. Dave, on social media, uh, it seemed like a lot of people were calling this one out. Some people called this shot. Does that bother you? No, it doesn't bother me. You know, at this stage in the game, you can kind of call things out and predict things based off of what we've done. And, you know, historically, we do a repeat. I went through all the repeats we've done in the past. And uh, it doesn't bother You know, I saw some people called it randomly. You know, whatever. It doesn't bother me. It and wasn't you know because what? of you. Like, next week's going to be pretty easy to call, too. Somewhat. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, at this stage in the game, that happens, and uh, it is what it is. And it's okay, because, again, it's a process of elimination. Yeah. All right, let's go to Brenda. We didn't hear from you. Uh, it was an amazing performance. Uh, we didn't know how this one was going to shake out. You did wonderful. You were one rep behind Brooke Wells. How do you feel? Brenda, lo hiciste increíble. Te, tu desempeño fue muy bueno. Estuviste una rep atrás de Brooke Wells. ¿Cómo te sientes al respecto? Me siento más que feliz. Sentir el apoyo de toda mi gente es algo increíble. Muchas gracias. Que viva México. She feels amazing with all of these guys' support right here, right now. Viva México. Yeah. Early, uh, early on, you, you fell behind, and you know that you've had trouble with deadlift in the past. Were you scared at that point? Cuando empezaste, empezaste un poco atrás de Brooke, y sabemos que tienes problemas con deadlift en el pasado. ¿Te sentiste un poquito con miedo? No, creo que la expectativa mía esta vez fue como vencer eso, vencer el miedo y me sentí muy bien durante el WOT y eso es algo que me da mucha tranquilidad, mucha seguridad y mucho ánimo para seguir trabajando duro. She wanted this to be her comeback, especially on deadlift, so she feels like she did a great job and it gives her a lot of push to keep on working this way. So one more, last year you were very intimidated when you worked out next to athletes like Camille LeBlanc, uh, Bazine. How do you feel now after this performance moving forward to 2017? El año pasado estabas un poco nerviosa cerca de entrenar al lado de Camille Blanc Bassinet. Ahora que entrenaste con Brooke y después de esto, ¿cómo te sientes? Me siento muy contenta y muy, muy motivada. Eh, entrenar con la sexta mujer más fit de este, del mundo, pues es una experiencia increíble. Eh, y es un honor eh, haber tenido esta oportunidad y me siento más motivada que nunca para seguir trabajando duro. She feels motivated and blessed now that she's been working out with the sixth fittest woman on earth. She feels like she's ready to go. What do you think about working out with Brenda? It was a pretty cool experience. Like, <laughs> you wouldn't have expected this matchup initially, but the way that it shook out, how, how, how was it taking the floor with the fittest woman in Mexico? Oh, it was such an honor. It's so much fun being here in Mexico. Um, it was funny, actually, when in, on Instagram, when um, I got tagged in the announcement, I saw Castro, and I texted Dave, and I'm like, Dave, I thought I was going against you, but... <laughs> that would have been a good show. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody want to see Dave Castro work out against Brooke Wells? Yeah. Yeah. Even with the women's weight, she'd still crush me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So uh, let's talk strategy. Early on, you were breaking up into fives on the deadlift, and you said that's a good strategy for people who think they're going to do pretty well. Yeah, um, I was expecting to get back to the deadlifts, and so um, breaking up early, I was ready to get back on the bar after the handstand push-ups, so I just didn't have enough time. I saw you talking to your coach, Ben Bergeron, before the workout, and I spoke to him as well. What, what was he telling you this workout was all about? Um, it's all about the handstand push-ups, making sure that um, you give a lot of effort to meet the standard for each rep. So um, 
I struggle with kind of an arch in my handstand push-up, so just trying to be hollow at the top was my main focus. It was your words, not mine, that you have trouble keeping your booty off the wall. Yeah, it's true. It's going to work on. Dave, uh, this was an interesting matchup. So usually we're used to seeing leaderboard athletes from the CrossFit Games, but we chose the fittest woman in Mexico to go head-to-head -head with Brooke. How did that come about? You know, this was a, a decision and a question that was, uh, or a decision that was questioned by some members of our team. You know, they thought it was a big gamble, and it was, but watching her closely, paying attention to her over the past few years, she's come a long way. And the way this happened was uh, she actually re recently received her Fittest in Mexico t-shirt that um, the Fittestins get from Reebok every year. And when she received that, she tagged me in a photo. She posted a photo of it. She tagged me. And I looked at it, and this was about a month before uh, we decided all the individuals who were going to compete. And I started going through Instagram, and I was looking at her scores and her numbers, and I was very impressed. You know, she has, a, she has great Olympic lifts. Her scores and CrossFit benchmarks are great. She then went to a level one. Actually, that same weekend, I saw that she was at a level one. And I texted Mike uh, G, one of our flow masters, and I asked how she was doing. And he said she did the day one workout in the fastest time he's ever seen. Ever. Ever. Yeah for him being a flow master at all the courses he's done, which is a lot. So I was like, okay, we're gonna give this a try. And I looked at her on the leaderboard last year. She was ranked in the top you know, 100 overall in the world. And, uh, and this year, she's, uh, she's ranked in the top 30 in the world. So she was a great choice. I'm really proud of her. And, uh, <laughs> I'm really happy how it played out. She's a great competitor and I can't wait to see her represent Latin America, you know, at regionals and potentially maybe the next level. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, Brenda, in the open era, we haven't had individuals representing Latin America at the CrossFit Games. What makes you think you could be the first? Brenda, in the CrossFit Games, we don't have anyone who has represented Latin America. How do you feel that you could be the first? They say that to be able to achieve something, you have to believe. I'm working very hard. Y creo realmente que puedo. Este es mi año y voy a ponerle más que el corazón para que así sea. She's saying that she, in order for you to achieve something, you need to believe. And she believes that she can. So she, she feels motivated to do it. All right, Brooke, I just got to point out one more time the atmosphere here. I mean, these people were amazing, but most of the cheers were going for Brenda. Was it difficult for you to stay, to stay motivated? I tried to get a USA chant going for you over there. just didn't catch on. But uh, how was it working out in kind of the lion's den? Uh, it's awesome. It's awesome to see this community supporting Brenda. So, I mean, I still had so much fun. I still had a couple cheers in there. So <laughs> They were easy to pick out. Yeah. Uh, Dave, any parting thoughts about this? You've been to Paris. I'd like to You've call been... Inyaki up here and just give yeah. him a big round of applause. And thank you. <laughs> thanks, thanks for hosting us here. You've been a great host here in Mexico. And thanks to all you guys. You guys have been awesome. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be our show for Mexico City. Remember, Roe versus Boz is coming up. Boz over there warming up in the corner. I see you, Boz. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. I'll see you next week. And until then, I'll see you on the leaderboard. Good night.